that proves the old Atlas dependability, doesn't it? Sure does. Look, Joe, take that jalopy there and run it over the bumps. See if you can crack a steering knuckle this time. Right. I don't know. I told the boss I didn't want any visitors. Tell her to get out. Oh, no, not me. I told her to get out once, and she looked right through me like I was made out of cellophane. Yeah, you ought to wear a petticoat. Well, what if I get one to fit? <laughs> All right, I'll tell her myself. Hey, wait! My boys are a little timid about uh, having strangers watch them. They'd uh, appreciate it if you'd move on. Look, lady, I don't want to argue, but you see, it's my job to keep people out of here. Would you mind leaving? Perhaps you don't know who I am. I don't care if you're visiting Riley. You'll have to get out of here. Even if it has only been a couple of weeks, it's been a pleasure working with you. Why? That was the boss's daughter. Oh. Oh. Car drives up, nobody's in it, it's Crowley. Hey, what's the idea of the bum's rush? Don't you know who she is? Yeah, I know, it's the boss's daughter. Well, not only that lame brain, she's a very dear friend, and I told her to meet me here. For a guy that bounces around these jitterbug jalopies, you're slap happier than the average. Why don't you shut your yap and take your little kitty car back to your own playground? What's the matter, the great T. Larry getting nervous? You lay off that lucky, lucky stuff or I'll bust you right... Lucky Taylor is wanted in Mr. Allen's office immediately. <laughs> Looks like the great Lucky Taylor's luck's gonna change at last. All right, bring it up. That's all for today. Have the boys over at the track tomorrow, two hours before showtime. I want a last-minute checkup on all the cars. Okay, Lucky. I don't have to tolerate such impudence, and I won't. I want him fired. You sent for me, uh, Mr. Allen? Yes. I've heard some very uncomplimentary things about you, Taylor. Your daughter? Of course. I thought as much. I brought you out here to test automobiles, not to go out of your way to be insulting. Such conduct is inexcusable. Why, in all my 19 years as president... I'm supposed to say I'm sorry we're wasting time. I've got a lot of work to do. Just a moment, young man. I want you to understand that courtesy is exercised just as strictly in the Atlas Company as on the highway. Well, if that's the case, Mr. Allen, I'll be very glad to accept your daughter's apology. You see, Dad, it's just as I told you. Well, what are you standing there for? Oh, I, I know. I'm fired. Well, that's that. So long, Dad. Parker! Parker! Uh, yes, sir? I want you to stop Taylor before he gets out of this building. Stop. Yeah, I want you to have him get right back on the job. On the yeah, job. Tell him he's going to get a $25 a week raise. Oh, you'll like that. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. But, Dad... No, I can't fire him, June. The Atlas car needs him for the test driving demonstration at the fair tomorrow. And besides, he makes for the kind of publicity that sells automobiles. Larry Taylor? Yes, certainly. I understand, Mr. Parker. Yes, Mr. Parker. Yes, Mr. Parker, I will. Yes. Yes, I understand, Mr. Parker. Wait, wait. Yes, Mr. Parker. Are you Mr. Taylor? Oh, that's all right. Just call me Larry. Well, Mr. Allen's secretary just phoned me to tell you that you still have your job and... Oh, yes, and a $25 a week raise. Would you say that again, lady? Mr. Allen's secretary told me... I got me it, I got it. Let's celebrate. No, thank you. I have a date. Well, break it. Well, of all the nerves. Hey, smoke should burn easy. Now, wait a minute. We'll have a swell steak there and then go someplace and dance. Fortunately, I'm not required to be polite to fresh people after hours. Good evening, Mr. Mr. Fresh. Oh. Hello, darling. Hiya, Pat. 
So long, Guppy. See you tonight. Hey, you still here? I thought you'd left town already. Nah, settled for a $25 a week raise. What's the idea of a swell-looking dame running off with a fogey old enough to be her father? <laughs> it isn't funny to me. Well, that is her father. No kidding. That's Pop O'Shea. He's the one that's been helping me with that oil-burning motor I was telling you about. Is that so? Hey, that interests me. Oh, sometime if you're not doing anything, why come on over to the house? Hey, I might do that. Sure, any time. Pop's garage is right in back of Esme's boarding house. That's where we all live. Does uh, Pop's daughter live there, too? Uh-huh. Uh, <clears throat> what'd you say the address was? 413 Grove Street. Gosh, I, I, I didn't expect to see you so soon. Well, I, uh, I didn't have anything better to do, so I, I thought I'd drop over and see you. Well, uh, hey. oh, well, I wish you'd go. You see, Pop's awful funny, and, well, he thinks I ought to keep my invention a secret. And, well, he's a fine mechanic, and, well, I wouldn't want him to get mad at me and walk out. Why the funny get-up? Are, are you a kitchen mechanic, too? Fun <laughs> oh, this will, you know, oil and splashes. Oh, sure. <laughs> you come back here and get these dishes cleared off. And don't you set one foot up until you've done every last one of those dishes. But ask me, I'm... None of your back talk. You do as I say. Ask me. <laughs> I just let her get away talking like that, cause, well, it makes her happy. <laughs> the wife? No, that's Esme, the landlady. We're engaged. What? And she makes you wash the dishes already, and you're not even married? Oh, well, you got it figured out all wrong. You see, when I first came here, I was stone broke, and, well, Esme said it'd cost me an extra dollar a day for my board and room if I didn't do the dishes. Well, that was quite a bit. Oh, it sure was. Now, you figure it out. There's seven days in a week, that's seven dollars. That's three hundred and sixty-five dollars a year. Yeah. Now, in ten years, that's three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. And in fifty years, that's eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Now, where am I going to get eighteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars? Well, Guppy, you really got a problem there. Well, I sure have. Well, while you think about it, I'll go in and finish, and then we'll go out and see her. Her? Sure, my oil burner. Jeffrey! Oh, it's you again. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Fresh. Guppy asked me over to take a look at a motor he's building. But between you and me, I can think of a lot of nicer things to look at. So sorry our interests aren't mutual. Now, if you'll let me pass. You'll get depressed staring into space like that. I duck the dishes. Come on, we'll go look at the motor. be getting along in years. But I'll have you know it's not the deafness that's come on me yet. Now, what is it, me bucko? Well, I want you to meet a friend of mine. What's the idea of bringing a total stranger in here on the night before the race? Oh, but Pop, he ain't a stranger. He's my boss, Lucky Larry Taylor. Well, can't a man be a thief with a name like that? Now, look, before you start slinging any more names around, I want to tell you that I'm not the least bit interested in this can. Oh, he's okay, Pop. Why, that's Lucky Larry Taylor. You know the guy that smashes all the cars and records. Sure, it's just as Eddie says, Pop. He don't mean any harm. You know how it is, Letty. When a man gives 20 of the best years of his life perfecting a thing of beauty, he don't like to see it taken away from him because of a numbskull who uses his head to scratch matches on. <laughs> sure. Me? <laughs> I know how it is, Pop. You see, Guppy here practically insisted that I come over and meet the O'Shea family. And now that I'm here, I, uh... Well, begging your pardon, this is my daughter, Patricia. 
Darling, this is uh, Lucky Larry Taylor. Not the great Lucky Taylor. Well, how do you do? Uh, right now, not so good. Really? Perhaps if you'd use your brains normally instead of just something to fall on, you might do better. I'm Eddie Dodd. I've always wanted to meet you, Mr. Taylor. It's Eddie here, who's driving the car in the big race at the fairgrounds tomorrow. Good luck, kid. Thanks, Mr. Taylor. Say, maybe you could give me a few pointers. No, you're talking to the wrong guy. When I risk my neck, I do it all by myself. I don't want 16 other slug nuts running their cars up and down the back of my neck. Huh. All you gotta do, Eddie, is to get out in front and stay there. You know, it's the same thing Bruce Crowley says, but with him in the race, how are we both gonna do it? Nah, it isn't as simple as all that. You gotta keep her right side up. Have a feel for the wheel and have a motor as dependable as your mother. A motor? Say, we got a motor, the O'Shea Special. She's the fastest thing in the country. Burns oil instead of gas. <clears throat> I think I better let Pop tell you about it. He knows more than I do. And what is there left to tell, you pot wallop? Jeffrey! Oh. Yeah. Oh. Bad enough to have to listen to the rattling of camshafts and pistons all night long, but I'm not going to lose another night's sleep by a thing full of dishes. Oh, oh. now, Esme, you're going to make a kitchen mechanic out of... I'm getting so sick and tired. <laughs> Poor Esme, she wouldn't be happy if she wasn't mad at somebody. Which is a woman's natural state. If it's an argument you're going to have, outside with the both of you. Eddie and I have work to do. Well, your pop okayed it. What about that date tonight? If you don't mind, I'd rather stay home and look at last week's funnies. They're not quite so silly and far more amusing. Huh. I want to impress upon all you boys the importance of proving to the world that the Atlas car is still the finest on the market. <laughs> and the demonstration that you'll give today will depend largely upon your own spirit. The Atlas spirit of progress, initiative, and cooperation. Oh, uh, speaking of cooperation reminds me that we have in our midst this year a newcomer, Lucky Larry Taylor. Hooray! Boys, I want you to make Lucky feel right at home. I want you to give him every assistance that you can in this dangerous work that he's about to do. And that's all, boys. See you at lunch. You give him their money's worth, son. I'll try my best. But don't overdo it. You're becoming more valuable to us every day. Come one, come all, folks. This is Tom Hanlon, inviting you to the Grover County Fair's free show. Hurry, 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 folks. The big free show has already started, and it's a show you won't want to miss. Remember, on a hot day like this, there's nothing so exhilarating as Gaviotta's ice cream. What if Lucky Taylor's Daredevils is warming up on the track? I mean, burning up the joint. No, I, I mean the fairway. Watch! <laughs> boys on their way through. <laughs> and here's what's known as the junk man's delight. Just a couple of Sunday drivers on their day off. And now we give you Lucky Larry Taylor in person. Don't be nervous, I'll be right here at the meeting. Thanks, Guppy. Lucky Taylor is now about to laugh in death's face as he hurdles himself through flaming barriers at 80 miles an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucky Taylor will now do a hop, skip, and a jump. 
you'll hop over a truck, skip over four cars, and jump over seven. Watch closely now, folks. He's going to the post. You mean to say he's going to jump that sedan over all those cars? He's at the starting point, and here he comes. Disappointed. There's more stunts coming up. Nice work, Larry. Nice work. Ah, boy. Nice hey, show that one, kid. All right, now show what you can do. There's the endless product for you. Not a dent in it. Replenish. And remember, folks, there's nothing so refreshing on a day like this as a dish of Gaviotta's ice cream. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you are now about to witness a feat that requires not only daring, but a high degree of scientific skill. With a judgment and precision of which only Lucky Larry is capable, he will throw the Atlas sedan into a half roll. A half roll, mind you, bringing the car to a stop on its side. He seemed like such a sensible young man. And what's courage got to do with being sensible? But it's such a useless risk. Are you that anxious that the laddie should come through without a scratch? Well, if the silly fool wants to kill himself, why should I worry? Are you all right, Lucky? Yeah. Here, have a cigarette. No, thanks. I got one more to do. All right, boys, right her up. Next comes Taylor's famous cyclone roll. And the cyclone roll is exactly what the name implies. I hope Guppy isn't going to try to do that. <laughs> Hang on to your seat, folks. Here he comes. Without even stopping. I guess the cyclone wasn't whirling enough. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep off the track. We cannot be responsible if Lucky's car gets out of control during this final stunt. Hang on. Hold on. Watch it. Here he comes. Did you, Lucky? No, not a bit. Oh, boy. All the same I'll have a cigarette now, Guppy. All right. <laughs> what are you shaking about? Oh, I just got through fixing the watch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put on the nose bag. What do you say? Oh, all right. I don't think I can eat anything. Be back in a minute. <laughs> I'll wait right here for you. Well, Miss O'Shea, how'd you like it? I came here to see a race, not how close a man can come to killing himself. That girl Lucky's talking to looks familiar. Who is she? She's a receptionist at your dad's office. Oh, yes. Now, look, I've been doing this for over ten years. And in all that time, there's been only two serious accidents. That's more than you can say for auto racing. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll promise to have dinner with me tonight, I'll promise to cut the most dangerous stunt I have scheduled. What do you say? Oh, I won't have people say I was responsible for killing a man. Swell. I'll see you tonight. Taylor's about to enter. I remember what I told you. Very loud and very funny. Who threw that? 
So I did. What about it? Oh, I forgot. You didn't have on your helmet. Did it hurt our little daredevil hero? Not half, <laughs> Not half as much as it's gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want more? <laughs> Okay, stand back, fellas, and fair play. Don't. Hey, don't you push, Guppy. I don't like your face. Kid and Taylor, and he couldn't take it, so he took a poke at me. Yeah, so I see. Taylor? Mr. Allen, this company isn't big enough for both Taylor and me. Either he goes or I go. Young man, that sounds like an ultimatum. You know, you cause me more trouble than a boatload of panthers. Who, me? Yes, you. What do you mean by beating up my driver an hour before the race? He's been skidding around those dirt tracks so long, he's spin dizzy. I'm telling you, if you don't get rid of this smart guy, I'm handing in my resignation. Resignation? And when does that go into effect? Starting right now, if he stays. And starting right now, you'll get your time. Yes, you're through. All right, that suits me. Better put a piece of raw meat on that eye. Perhaps it's better to have him quit right now than in the middle of the race. Yes, I am. Uh, Mr. Allen, if it's all the same to you, uh... uh so you're not going to quit, too. Oh, I thought maybe I could help you out of a spot by driving that race car for you. Know anything about racing? Enough to know that it takes more skill to skid them on their tops than to barrel them around turns on all four wheels. Jones, do you think you can do it? That's one way of finding out. All right, young man, it's settled. You report to the pit. Yes, sir. Maybe I should have had him driving for me in the first place. Yes, I am. Yes, he's got what it takes. Yes, I am. Attention, please. We have a last minute announcement to make. In the 20 lap main event coming up, Lucky Taylor replaces Bruce Crowley in the Atlas Special. Taylor replacing Crowley in the Atlas Special. I thought you said Larry was rooting for us. Oh, he can't help it. The old man forced him into it. Hey, you better take it easy with that cigarette. You'll swallow it. No, I'm not nervous. Oh, no, no, no. Pass the word around to the boys? Sure. Say, we'll box Taylor up so tight he won't be able to snap his fingers. And another thing I want to tell you. Right down, here he comes. All cars on the track in the order of qualification. All right, boys, let's get her on the track. Get some beef on it. Good luck, Eddie. Thanks. Hey, Lucky! I hope our smoke don't bother you. Okay, Governor. <laughs> Start them rolling, boys. And hold those pacing positions until you get the flag. All right, boys, give me a shove. Come on, what's eating it? Let's go. The Grover County Speed Classic is about to start. The track being much faster than last year, we're due for a thrilling race. Well, what you got your fingers crossed for? This is good luck for Eddie.
Well, Eddie's moving up with the rest of them. He's a brave lad, Eddie is. dangerous north turn. He's bounced off the fence and lost the wheel. Eddie Dodds and the O'Shea Special is driving dangerously fast. He's trying to pass. Uh oh It's going into the turns too fast. You sure straighten that one out all right. skid and roll over the top of the track. Looks badly hurt. That's the kind of danger our oil burner will eliminate. Keep your eyes on that Atlas special. With Lucky Taylor, the stunt driver at the wheel, we can expect anything. What a race. What speed throws the wheel. Slippery as glass. You know, I'd like to think that you didn't. But personally, I'd say that for the present, you'd better stick to test driving. All right, Mr. Allen, you're the boss. But I still think I can drive a race car as well as anybody in the business. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, I wouldn't like to make the same mistake twice. I understand. Oh, hello, Lucky. I didn't get a chance to tell you how sorry I am that... Thanks, Miss Allen. But I'd rather not talk about it. I hope you weren't too hard on the dear boy, Dad. Well, the old man was pretty nice about it. Probably hurt him more than it did me. 
Yes, you seem to make a habit of going around hurting people. I suppose it means nothing to you that you put my father in a sick bed. Pat, you don't think that... And you don't seem to be very much concerned about sending a young boy to his death. What? You two? I guess one life more or less doesn't really much. If you stop to figure out things like that, you're sunk. Yes, I know. Being hard is your business, but... But I guess I happen to be sentimental about that sort of thing. Lucky. Just a minute, Lucky. Well, well, I didn't expect to see you so soon again. My, you are a man of quick moods, aren't you? Turn them on and off like that. Can I drop you somewhere? Let's go. You know, Dad's desperately in need of a driver for the international speed class. What's that got to do with me? Well, I might be able to convince him how indispensable you are to him. Why this sudden interest in me? Really? You underestimate yourself. Come on, get in. No, thanks. My car's parked just in back of yours. Oh, I see. Try driving an Atlas, not a crash in a carload. Sorry we had to give you such an old model, Taylor. But the old man figured, if the glass holds up in this frame, it'll withstand any impact. You wouldn't be trying to economize by any chance, would you, Mr. Jones? What do you mean, economize? With the bonus you're getting? Do when you run out of these old cars. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Larry, I'm awful glad you were cleared of Eddie's accident, and I've been wanting to tell you that, well, I didn't think you were to blame in the first place. Thanks, fella. But you could sound a little more convincing about it. What Pat have to say? Oh, she hasn't had much to say about anything here lately. Why, what's the matter? Oh, it's old Pop. Ever since Eddie was killed, well, he's been sick in bed and all broke up about it. And then on top of that, they barred his oil burner off the track. Gee, that's tough. Maybe we can figure something out. Oh, I don't know. If old Pop can't figure out what blew off that cylinder head, I don't think we can. And well, he's already entered last year's gas buggy in the international race, and to make matters worse, he's got Bruce Crowley to drive it for him. Bruce Crowley? Uh-huh. Boy, that is bad. Hey, come on, Taylor, let's go. Come on, come on. Taylor stood the impact like a piece of steel. You bet it did. And it jolted me right into a terrific idea. Got it. Didn't you tell me the only thing wrong with Potts Motor was a broken head? Uh-huh, that's all. Mr. Jones, what are the chances of this company financing an oil-burning motor? Pretty slim, I'd say. What's the matter with you guys? Haven't you got any vision at all? Don't you realize it'll make cars run cheaper, safer, and easier? We find gasoline engines quite adequate. Uh, stick around, fella. We'll have Pop in his feet in no time. Uh, you wouldn't be trying to sweep the dust off her feet, would you? <laughs> we'll get the jump on every other company in the business. If it works. If it works, all that engine needs is a cylinder head and tie bolts of a greater tensile strength. It must work. It sounds reasonable. I think we should try it. It may sound reasonable to us, but I doubt very much whether we could convince our board of directors. You know, this came up once before, and you remember the reception it got. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's quite a problem. If we could only prove it with a practical demonstration. Look, the International Speed Classics are coming up next month. But any oil-burning motor is an outlawed product as far as racing's concerned. It's all figured out. Hey, listen, this isn't going to interfere with your driving our car in that race. No, that's all part of the plan. All I want to get from you is an okay to go ahead. I don't know what we're letting ourselves in for, but if it works, it's worthwhile. This is a chance of a lifetime. You can't give up now. Well, I'm not going to let you do it. Why should you sacrifice something that you've worked on for so many years? 
It's the pride of my life, that motor was. And she betrayed me. Maybe if we sell her, it'll be better for all of us. Well, you can rest assured, if Lucky Taylor wants to buy it, there's something crooked about the whole thing. Oh, what's the matter with Lucky? He's a swell guy, and besides, he's crazy about you. Oh, yes. The only thing he's interested in is anything that'll put him in the limelight. Oh, what's the lad done to you that you should be sash with him? Well, it's... Oh, I don't trust him. He's just an opportunist. You gave me a half interest in this invention, and I won't let you do any business with Lucky Taylor. Here he is now. Hiya, Lucky. I just rented the second floor front. The bed has to be made. I'm in a big business deal. I ain't got no time to make beds. Well, you could have your choice. It's either the uh, dinner dishes or the bed sheets, my love. No. All right. Pop, if you want me, I'll be up at the second floor front. Just making another bed. I'm getting sick and tired of being a chambermaid. Don't give up, Guppy. Stick up to your right. <laughs> How are you feeling, Mr. O'Shea? Oh, fair to Midland. Have you come to a decision? Yes, we have, and the answer is no. Well, if it's a question of more money, why... Oh, it's not the money that's stopping me. It's uh, my business partner. But, Mr. O'Shea, this is a chance in a million. Unlimited capital to back you up. I, you told me yourself it was just a question of finances. We can manage nicely without you, Mr. Taylor. And you're 18 bucks a week? Look here, Mr. Taylor. I don't like you nor the things you do. And I've told you before, we don't care to do any business with you. Mr. O'Shea, you're not going to let a rattle-brained girl interfere at a time like this. I'll not have you referring to my daughter in such a tone under my own roof. I'll take care of this. I think you've done enough harm up to now. Will you please go? I guess we told that lad off and... Real style, didn't we, darling? Yes, Dad, you were marvelous. Boy, it fits like the paper on the wall. You couldn't blow that head off with a charge of dynamite. Oh, man, if Pop ever finds out we've been tinkering with this motor, oh, I don't know why I had to get mixed up in this. Now, if you keep your big mouth shut, you never will find out. Well, I've been working so hard at talking my sleep. Sleep alone, don't you? Yeah, but that... You, you better hide your work. You all set for tomorrow, Guppy? Oh, sure it's all set. I put so many hours in on this motor, all I can see is nuts and bolts. Last night when I went to bed, well, I tried to take my shoes off on the monkey ranch. <laughs> Get all reliable, Guppy. We can always count on you. Always count on Guppy. <laughs> you better get home and get some sleep, Bruce. I'll see you at the track tomorrow. All right. Good night. Night. Good night. Now, don't you leave this car alone tonight. I don't trust race drivers. You mean Bruce? Say, I don't trust him either. Not for that long. Well, that goes for all of them. Oh, now, Pat, you don't mean Larry. He's awful nice, and you ought to get to know him better. I know enough about him already. Oh. As a mechanic, you're terrific, but as a Cupid, you're a bust. Well, I just thought if you two would get married, that is, you and Pat, well, how much easier this whole thing would be. Look, they're taking the Atlas Special over the track tonight, and I want to be there when it arrives. Mm -hmm. The switch motor's the first thing in the morning. Be there early, will you? Oh, all right, I know I'm not going to get any sleep, but do you think anybody would care if I just blinked a couple of times? Oh. And to wind up this morning's news, the weatherman promises sunny weather for the International Speed Classic today. With a starting lineup of 34 cars, they should top all past races. So tune into this station at 11 a.m. for a word picture for this event of speed and thrills. This is Sam Hayes saying that's 30. I never thought I'd live to see a daughter of mine taking my place in the pit. Well, somebody's got to look after the O'Shea interests. Yeah, it'll be the first time I've missed the classic in 26 years. One thing you've got to promise me, Dad, when the race comes on, don't get too excited. And don't smoke so much. I'm afraid, darling, there won't be very much for me to get excited about. Our gas car was a lovely thing three years ago, but I ain't kept it up with the times since I started tinkering with that oil motor. Well, you can count on Bruce. If there's one chance in a thousand, he'll bring our car home a winner. Yeah, uh, not with that Atlas entry. 
They turn out a mighty fine motor. And that'll be the car to beat. Well, even if we don't win, we'll put up a good fight. Yeah. After all, what would the classic be without a Noche entry? Mm. Now, don't forget what I said about getting too excited. Bye. Qualifying. Come on, let's get to work. Oh, boy, oh, boy, what a fit. Yes, sir, just like a foot in the mud. That was a beautiful run, Bruce. Oh, hello, Pat. I didn't expect to see you here so early. What did you do? Oh, about 115 or 16. Hmm, not bad. Yeah, it's not good either. Taylor did 119 officially. Well, where's Guppy? Shouldn't he be going over the car? Uh, he's too busy to be bothered with us. Last time I saw him, he's headed for the Atlas tent. And where's the Atlas tent? Right there. I'm going to have a talk with Mr. Guppy. Oh, if we ever get away with this. Guppy! Yes, ma'am? Guppy Wexler, why aren't you down at the tent where you belong? Well, you see, I was just coming down through the track, and, and while I was going so fast, you know, I got in the gas line, I went into a bad tailskin, and went right into a tent and come out of the tire. Well, come on, let's get out of here. Well, it's if hot. you're so interested in what's going on here, you... So this is what you've been up to. Pops oil motor. <laughs> oh, now, Pat, we can explain honestly. You won't explain it to me. You'll explain it to the police. Oh, but it ain't near as bad as it looks. Do you want us? Oh, listen to reason, will you? We're doing it for Pop's sake. You're nothing but a couple of common thieves. No. So this is the man you told me I should know better. Uh -huh. Well, I can assure you, Mr. Taylor, this is the last time you'll ever steal anything. Oh, grab her, Guppy. Grab her, Guppy. Grab her, grab her. 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 Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Never mind that, boys. I've checked the motor thoroughly. All I ask you to do is be quick change artists when I come into the pit. Hey, Taylor, where's that lame brain mechanic, Guppy? Take a look under your hood. You'll probably find him there. Oh, a comic, huh? All set, Lucky? Yes, sir. Say, you don't look a bit nervous. Well, the crack still goes. All you have to do is keep it right side up and let the motor do the rest. Come, Dad. The race will soon be on. Good luck. Thank you. Attention all drivers and mechanics. Attention drivers and mechanics. All cars on the track in order of their qualifying time. All right, boys. Get going. All right, Taylor. On the track. Yes, sir. You're missing the down beat. Oh, Lola. Don't be Wexley. You let me out of here. Uh-uh. Larry wouldn't like it. And besides, I don't want to go to jail. Oh, I hate you, Guppy. I'm a hillbilly. Cars are being placed on the back stretch now. We're waiting for the start. I'll give you the position. In the pole position, Glenn Travis, Rex Jones, and Hank Saunders, followed by Art Most, Bob Heck, and Larry Taylor. It is said that he is the boy to watch today with a qualifying time of 114 and 32 one hundredths miles per hour. It's easy to see that records will be broken here today. Farther back in line is Bruce Crowley driving Pop O'Shea's gas motor. They're in a beautiful lineup now for a fast start. There's the flag and the race is on. The is bringing out nicely as they settle down to the grinding pace required to finish out this contest of speed and endurance. Glenn Travis in the lead is setting a fast pace. 
Lockheed Taylor in car 26 is falling behind. Bruce Crowley in car 38 is rapidly moving up. Crowley, you know, is driving the O'Shea gas motor. It's a pity Pop O'Shea was forced to withdraw his motor from racing due to that accident at the Grover County Fair. Thank you. But Pop's motors are well known, and we can expect a good race from his gas engine. I don't know why, but Lucky Taylor is still holding back. He's just been passed by Bruce Crowley. Crowley's rapidly moved from fifth to third place, driving out beautiful race. Well, Crowley always did overdrive. He's starting it again. Glenn Travis in first place, followed by Bruce Crowley in second place and driving hard. Rex Jones in odd post in third and fourth. Hank Saunders fifth, and there goes Lucky Taylor in sixth place. Officer. Hey, what's the matter with you? Are you colorblind? Why, sir? Didn't did... you see that stop sign in that town back there? Why, I really didn't, sir. Oh, I've long to the gate. I'm gonna break the truck. Nobody in Hey, Frank. Hey, get out of there. Don't start any funny stuff. Keep your eye on this guy while I have a look in the back of the truck. All right, come on, get out. Hey, what's the matter, miss? Arrest that man, officer. He's trying to kidnap me. Kidnap? Say, frisk that man. He's dangerous. Come here, you. Here. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Hey, Dickles. Dickles? Sure, I'll I show you. <laughs> hey, Mulligan. Uh, yes, Sergeant. This man's a thief, officer. They stole my father's special oil motor, he and his partner, Larry Taylor. My father's Pop O'Shea, and he builds racers. You've got to stop the race right away. Now, just a moment, lady. My brain don't work that fast. One charge at a time, please. You're drunk. That's what you are. You're falling down drunk. I'm nothing of the kind. Well, we'll soon find out about that. Let me see you walk that line. Yeah, go ahead, walk it, walk it. Yeah, All right, I'll show you. Yeah, walk it. Ooh. Dizzy. Uh-huh. What did I tell you? Just like I said, oh, drunk. Shut up. I uh, am not. I've been bouncing around in that hey, truck. Hey, we better run them both in and get this thing settled. That's a good idea. Run us Go in. Go get in the run car. Go run on. Me on. Come on. Run me in. Run me in. Well, get right in there. Well, right in here. There you go. Now, you take me down to the track as fast as you can go. Sure, lady. Sure. Oh, that's a door. She's drunk. Shut that's up, man. Right go. Go. Fourteen cars remaining in the race. Bruce Crowley in the O'Shea Special holds the lead. He's set a pace that's terrific. Larry Taylor in the Anthem Special must have something up his sleeve, for he's made no attempt to really race, seemingly content to hold sixth place. I told you Bruce was a better driver. Say, you don't look a bit displeased. I don't know what a race isn't won until the last lap, and this one's only half over. to romp on it. Lucky Taylor just stepped on it, and how? Oh, from the way that car is picking up speed, it must have some motor under that hood. Maybe he's been holding back just to show off in a driving finish. Lucky's moving up. I don't know why Lucky was holding back, but he's sure making up for lost time. like man. There goes number four out of control. But what I've been telling you is true, officer. These men have been racing under false colors. Well, if you don't believe me, take me down to the track and I'll prove it to you. Well, I think we ought to go right to the station. Hey, you boys play pinochle? Pinochle? Say, I'm shut the Shut up. Uh, shut up. Huh? Uh, I don't mean you, Sergeant. Hey, what's the idea, lady? Yeah, what's the idea? I'll prove to you that Lucky Taylor's in that race and that he's using my father's oil motor. Oh, you got to excuse her, boys. It runs in the family. Shut up, Guppy. Yeah. Duffy? No, Guppy. Oh, Guppy. No, Guppy. It's a nickname. It ought to be. They're breaking all records for speed and endurance here at the International Speedway. Lucky Taylor's terrific pressure has forced car after car into the pits for gas and oil. But his Atlas Special is still driving on its original tank of fuel. What a motor he must have. <laughs> 
That's one I can't figure out. See? Hey, did you get that? What? I've heard those oil burners ain't supposed to use much fuel. Well, maybe she knows what she's talking about. You gotta arrest me! I'm a kidnapper and I demand my constitutional rights! Shut up! Oh, shut up! Well, what do you think? Well, it wouldn't do any harm to take a run over the track. Okay, let's go. I'm getting dangerous! You better lock me up or I'll tear this shut shit up! Will you pipe down? Yes, sir. driving a real race. The motor's so far superior, it isn't even funny. Bruce Pauley is holding first place, with Glenn Travis a close second. Peter is now passing Travis, moving into second place. Never in my announcing career have I seen a motor perform like this atlas. Unless I miss my guess, Taylor will make track history here today. And do you think there's only one car in the race, your mullet head? You tin can heap. How dare you disgrace the name of O'Shea? That Atlas car is certainly a marvel of the automobile industry, and Taylor's driving a brilliant race. Did they expect it to rip on one tank of gas? don't trust anybody. Just look bad for Taylor. There are five cars in a position to lap him, and are they romping on him? Exhaust? Well, that's what I've been saying. It's from the O'Shea All Motor. But that car wasn't entered in this race. Oh, do something about it. What do you want to do? Larry's doing all right. Bring that car in again. No, don't you do it. Wait a minute, folks. Wait a minute. An official had just left the Atlas pit and is conferring with the other officials. Yes, sir, they're bringing out the white flag. You know, if the driver is signaled with a white flag, he must stop at his pit on the next lap around. Yes, sir, they're flagging Taylor in. He's not going to stop for anything. He's romped on it all the more. Of course, the officials will have something to say about it after the race is over. But apparently, Taylor's main idea is to show the speed of that motor, which he is doing beautifully. speed of the leading car at this time of the race is 121 and 26 one hundredths miles per hour. Why, at that rate of speed, anything can happen and generally does. <laughs> Number 14 just went through the fence. This pace is telling, believe you me. Any car that survives this Disney world will be something. 
Crowley still to have the back, is romping on the O'Shea car for all his work. Three mini cars have tangled in a terrible accident on the north turn. The O'Shea car skidded, turned over, is burning fastly. Travis glanced off the O'Shea car and went over the wall. Number 16 crashed into the infield fence trying to avoid the wreck. Only three laps to go, the cars have been flagged down and are holding their positions until the track is clear. I'm afraid this is the end of the O'Shea special. Too bad. Polly was driving a beautiful race. But I don't understand. Oh, but you will, Pat, soon as you see Pop and Mr. Allen. There's the green flag. The track is clear. The race is up. There's only a half and a half to go. Hank Saunders, number four, is in first place, followed closely by Larry Taylor. Taylor's pulling up on number four in a terrific drive toward the finish. Taylor's along Hank Saunders. Taylor takes the lead. They're getting off the winning flag. That's it, ladies and gentlemen, and what a motor Taylor was driving. It responded to his every wish. Wait a minute. There's a mob of officials going to the Atlas pit. Uh oh just a minute. The officials are going to investigate that motor. I thought there was something peculiar in the performance of that. Huh? Yes, sir. Taylor was driving Pop O'Shea's oil-burning motor, which by some ruse he'd gotten in to the Atlas special. I'm going down to the pit and get the details. Hang on. I'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> He's a lad after my own heart. That's the Irish in him. As president of the American Racing Commission, I've been asked to make several statements. Because the car you entered in the race was using an outlawed motor disguised as an Atlas Special, it has been disqualified even though it did win the race. Now, this is a list of our board of directors. Make sure they receive a copy of what the commissioner just said. Because of these findings, the prize money will necessarily go to the runner-up. Gee, if you'd have figured on getting married, you could have used that dough. Yeah. And you, Mr. Taylor, have violated all rules. We find you a potential menace to racing. And hereafter, you'll be permanently suspended. Good. <laughs> Say, what's the matter with you people? Don't you understand? I'm trying to tell you that you're through with racing. Well, that's fine. Now Taylor can devote all of his time to managing the O'Shea wing of the Atlas plan. Well, great. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> well, isn't that... So long, Commissioner. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Larry? That means you're through studying. Not so fast. I still got one more job to do. But, Larry, you promised... ...to marry you. Hey, hey, hey. Well, congratulations. Thanks, Guppy. <laughs> and a guy like you squawks about being called lucky. 